Hey guys, Mike Fury here. What we're going to do today is take a QNAP TS451 NAS device. We're going to remove the default 1 gigabyte of RAM and we're going to install 4 gigabytes of RAM. That'll allow us to run uh, additional applications on the device such as Virtualization Station where you can go ahead and run different copies of Windows as a server on your NAS, uh, which means you don't need to go ahead and build a second a second system in your house, let's say, to run a small copy of a SQL Server. Uh, this works very well in home offices, small businesses. Uh, the skills required to do this. If you know how to turn a screwdriver, you'll be able to do this. This is, it's an easy upgrade. It's not as easy as, let's say, some laptop upgrades where you remove a panel off the back uh, and swap out the DIMM without actually opening up the unit. In this case here, we do have to take a, a lot of the unit apart. We got to take the shell off. We got to take the drive bays out, uh, and then we replace the the dim, or add a second dim if you'd like. If you want to bring it all the way up to eight gigs, uh, and then put it back together. If you can do that, you can do this. So let's go ahead and get started. So what we're going to do today, guys, is we're going to take this QNAP TS451 four bay NAS, and we're going to upgrade it from its default one gigabyte up to four gigabytes. One gigabyte is fine for file sharing, um, but the QNAP runs a whole bunch of apps, including virtualization, um, whereas you can run different copies of Windows on it at the same time. Uh, it runs all these different servers. One gigabyte is certainly not sufficient for, to run a lot of the stuff that's on there, but that's what it comes with. Fortunately for us, it's really easy to upgrade. So what we're going to do here is take out the four screws on the back of the NAS. We are doing that to make it a lot easier to get, well, we're doing that to take the shell off. So there's two on the top, two on the bottom. The one on the bottom is dead center under the fan. Okay, so once the four screws are out, we're just going to go ahead and what this shell does is just slide off to the back. Uh, you have to turn it on its side. It kind of goes around three, three sides of the device. Um, truth in advertising. This is the first time I ever opened up the thing. I did it for you guys uh, just to show you how it was going to be done. Um, one thing I discovered here, though, is that you do have to take the drive bays out. Not sure why I didn't think of that, but uh, the drive bays all have to come out. What I would recommend is that, actually not recommend, uh, almost required, uh, you have to number the drives. One, two, three, four, based on the bays. If you put them back in the wrong bays, you will have problems accessing your data later. That would be bad. So just write number one, two, three, four uh, on top of the labels of your drives as you take them out. <laughs> Um, save yourself some heartache. And also, just to be fair, it wouldn't be bad to back up your data before you do this, um, just in case you do something horrific and blow up the NAS. Uh, anyway, your outer shell is off at this point. What I am doing now is trying to figure out how I'm going to get down to the uh, RAM, and I decided to start taking the rest of the device apart. Uh, if you look here, um, I'm trying to take out the four screws that hold on the other half of the plastic shell, um, which kind of surrounds the logic board on the other side. Uh, so take those four screws out. They are different than the ones that were on the back of the case, so separate those and put them off to the side. These four screws had sort of a red dot on them. I'm not exactly sure why, although I did just send this back to QNAP for a logic board failure and it came back to me a couple days before this um, so I'm not sure all QNAPs will have that little red dot I don't think it means anything um, but it may have said something to do with the repair that I sent it off for um, I typically I'm a little OCD I typically stand my screws uh, when I can uh, on the back so they stand up and they don't roll off I hate to lose things Now, this other shell, once you get those four screws out, just kind of unclicks. Um, be a little bit careful because the front of it is surrounding the USB port on the front and those contact switches and the LEDs, so uh, not that this is hard or that it's prone to 
breaking stuff, but that's probably the most delicate part you got to deal with right there, and it's not really that big of a deal. So at this point, I'm kind of looking at the thing going, where the heck is the SIM slot? Well, it's down underneath that drive bay, and you can't get to it without taking out the entire drive bay. So guess what? We're taking out more screws. Uh, there's four screws, uh, two on each side at the bottom of the drive bay. You're going to see me taking them out now. Um, two on the left, two on the right. And then subsequent to that, you're going to see that you need to take out one screw at the top, which ties into the fan housing. Uh, so I'll let you watch that. Once these screws are out, uh, you basically just pull straight up on the drive bay. There is an edge connector in the back, um, which ties the drive bay into the logic board. Um, you're not going to break anything. Uh, just you know, use common sense. Uh, don't rub your feet on carpet and load the thing with static electricity. Uh, take your screws out. Just lift gently. Um, this is the point where I just noticed the screw on the top of the fan casing. Uh, not a big deal. So you're going to take that out, and then you're going to put it aside. Now we're upgrading this. Uh, like I said, I came with uh, one gigabyte of memory. Um, officially, you can upgrade it to eight gigabytes of memory. I've heard of people that upgraded it to 16 gigabytes. And it works just fine. I just happen to have a 4 gigabytes uh, SO DIMM. I bought it off my daughter. Uh, she upgraded her laptop and this worked out well. And I wanted to play with the virtualization stuff. Uh, so you can see there I took out the entire drive cage. And now we're at the motherboard. You can clearly see the one DIMM closest to the camera. Um, there's my new DIMM. So you just pull the two little arms aside and pull that out and sit it down. Uh, the second DIMM is to the left side there. Um, they're not in parallel. They're sort of perpendicular there. So if you had a second DIMM, you would put it over there. So I'm just comparing speeds and being geeky and looking at the tech specs. Okay, so you don't need a lot of pressure. You just kind of sit it in there and close it and let it clamp down. I'm putting the other DIMM aside so I don't mess it up. Uh, later use. Okay, now you're done. The upgrade's completed. You're just going to reassemble everything. So the drive cage is going to go back in. Uh, it's going to connect into the same edge connector. Again, it's going to take a little bit of pressure. If it takes a lot of pressure, you're doing something wrong. It just takes a little bit of pressure. Very easy to do. Relax. You're not going to break anything. Uh, if you got the confidence to go this far, you, you got the skills to finish it. So we're going to put the screws back in the top of the fan casing. And by the way, I did not use a magnetic screwdriver. So you know, I had to be a little delicate. Um, a magnetic screwdriver really does help here because, uh, especially if you're new at this, screws fall. Um, Murphy's Law of screws falling is they fall down into the place you can't get at it. So typically under the logic board or someplace else that's just a real pain in the ass. So be careful. Um, like I said, a magnetic screwdriver makes it a little bit easier. So the fan screws are back in. You got the four screws here at the bottom of the drive cage. Uh, so you go ahead and screw those back in. Okay, now that the drive bay is back in, we're going to go ahead and put on the outside shell. Um, slide it from the front toward the back so you can get it over the USB connector. Um, get your contact switches in. This is real easy. And then once it sits in, it's, it's kind of like a glove. Uh, go ahead and put in the screws to hold this. Okay, once that shell's on, 
you're going to go ahead and put on the main part of the case. And this is very much like a uh, traditional, kind of a cheap PC case. Uh, you slide it over, it's got these slide connectors. It works, it's a little tricky sometimes, but start from the back, push the thing all the way down, start from the back, slide it forward. I'm just checking the, uh, the connectors there, make sure I'm doing it right. Um, but basically just go ahead and put it down there. It's, it's, again, it's not hard, it's just take some patience. So push down, slide it forward. Um, you should find that both sides are flush with the with uh, the bottom shell. And at this point, you go ahead and put in your last four screws, and you are completely upgraded after this. So let's get those screws in, and then we'll boot the unit up, and we'll, we'll see that it does have the additional memory. All right, all our screws are in now, so let's go ahead and reinsert our drives. And you can see as I pointed really, really fast at that drive that I did actually number them one through four, with one being on the left, four being on the right. So if you number them, you'll have no trouble figuring out where each one goes. So and these are all four gigabyte drives, so, so this unit has 16 terabytes. Um, roughly 12 usable after the uh, after the raid so at this point we booted it up and you can see uh, that indeed we do have four four gigabytes of RAM so congratulations you've gotten your NAS upgraded uh, go ahead and try out the virtualization go ahead and run some more apps and enjoy uh, this is Mike Fury it's been fun sharing this with you